Okay, this is the first video in a series on, uh, I'm just going to go over the very basics of making a minimal game using Phaser 2D Library. This is for creating games in HTML5 with JavaScript, which is a great way to make games because regardless of what platform you are, on, regardless of what hardware you're on, as long as you have a modern web browser, you can play this game. Uh, you don't even need to install anything. You can make the games playable offline so you don't need an internet connection once you've run it and you know you can reboot as many times as you want and the game is still playable without an internet connection we might get into that later on in the series right now we're just going to work on the basic game and uh, so as I said we're going to be using phaser which is a library uh, phaser.io is their website looks like this and it is a great resource uh, you can go to github and fork their project with all their examples you can click on examples and they have all these examples broken down into different categories, over 600 all together right now. But for you guys, I've also set up a GitHub repository. It's called Phaser Minimal Setup. My username is MetalX1000, so if you go to github.com forward slash MetalX1000, or go to my website, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with the K, uh, there is an option to go to my GitHub account there, and then you can search for Phaser Minimal Setup, or I'll put a link in the description of this video for you. And what this is, it's just has the basic files for you to get you going and um, let's just do that and get going so uh, on github you know you can choose to use uh, this to clone it which is how I would normally do it but for people who aren't familiar with github there is a download button here and you can go ahead and click that I'm actually going to copy that and I'm going to go into the folder where I have my web server running and I'm going to type in wget and I'm going to download that. You don't have to do this part, you can just um, click the download button if you don't know how to use wget. Uh, and now I'm going to unzip the master zip and that creates a folder for me called phaser minimal setup dash master. Now I can go over to my web browser here and navigate to where my web server is running on localhost or remotely and I can then click on uh, Phaser Minimal Setup, and here we go. I have a blank game for you, all ready to go. So let's go ahead and start creating a game. So I'm going to move into that folder, and again, I'm going to be using uh, uh, Vim as my text editor. Use whatever text editor you like, just make sure it's not a Word document editor. It's very different than a text editor, and it won't work. But, uh, you know, uh, you can use gedit, kate, uh, or whatever word uh, text document editor you want to use. So I'm going to come in here and let's quickly look. I've created an index.html file for you here. Very, very simple HTML layout. I have the title of the game, which will show up on the tab in the web browser. Then I'm loading the phaser library here, which I've already downloaded the latest version into this repository for you. So it's already there and I'll probably keep this repository. We'll try to keep it up to date in the future. And then I'm also linking to a main JS file, which is where we are going to actually write our game. But this is your basic HTML file. I'm not going to type this out bit by bit because hopefully, you know, basic HTML tags. Um, now I'm going to vim into my JS folder and go into my main JS file where I've created a blank template for you here. In fact, I should have removed that, uh, that, and that. I don't know why I left those in there. I'll probably remove that before you download that file. So when you go in, it will look like this. And what this is saying is we're creating an object here called game and we're going to use our phaser library. So anytime you see phaser like this, it's using that phaser library and in this case we're going to create a game. So we're creating an object called game and we're using the phaser game function and we're going to give it some parameters here. We are going to uh, give it a size and I'm just going to go 1080 by 720. Uh, but you know, do whatever you like, you know, if you want a long game or a wide game portrait or, or landscape game, you know, depending on whether you're going to be doing this, how you're going to make your game, you know. <laughs> uh, and this phaser auto, if I remember correctly, I always type that, but I'm pretty sure that that uh, phaser will check and see if you have hardware acceleration available, in which case it will use WebGL for your game. If not, it will default back to Canvas. Now you can tell it to use WebGL or tell it to use Canvas, but if you put auto 
phase will see which is available and use the best option. Next option here I left blank, but I'm pretty sure that's where you put the scene. That's for larger games, you can have multiple scenes. I'm just leaving that blank for now. Now here's the, the most important part here, is we have three functions that we're defining here. Our preload function, our create function, and our update function. So we're, we're saying for this game, there are these functions and it's in JSON here, but basically we say preload and we're gonna then the second half is saying use this preload function. Next for this game, the create function is called create, which is this function here. And we're saying for this game, the update option is the update function, which we're gonna create right here. Okay, so what are these three things? Well, when you're creating a game, you don't want your game to start before all your resources have loaded into RAM. So, any characters, images, sounds, music, you want to make sure that they're all loaded before the game starts. And that's what the preload function is for. After that stuff is loaded, the next thing it's going to run is the create option, the create function, where you're going to create your basic level and anything you want that loads when the game starts. And then the update is what happens when the game updates. There's actually another option you can put in here called render which is something, it's like the update, but it happens not just on the update cycle, but on each frame that's rendered. I mainly stick with the update. There's probably instances where you wanna use the render, but we're not gonna get into that in this series. Let's start with our preload function. So we're going to go ahead and load an image. Now, if you look at our the repositories that you downloaded from GitHub, you see there's a RES folder that I created. Uh, for resources and in here I have two images. I have a brick PNG which is just a little thing I made, a repeating pattern. I made that in GIMP and then there's an image of Tux that I downloaded from the internet which um, I actually don't know if I have the rights to use this but there it is. So, so those are just two images I put in there to get you started but you can load any images you want. You can even load them remotely if they're on another server but it's usually a good idea to put them on your server to make sure that they load and they don't get moved. So let's go ahead and load up that image of Tux. So what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say game which is the object we created up here so if you call it something else up here you're going to call it something else here but we're gonna call it game, this is our game object. We're gonna say use the load function and what are we loading? You have different options. We're gonna load an image, okay? And then we're gonna pass two parameters to this function. We're going to say what we're gonna call this image in the rest of our script. So anytime we wanna load this image of Tux, how, what are we gonna call it? We'll call it Tux in this case. You can call it player if it's your player, but whatever you wanna name it there, obviously keep it short, avoid special characters but whatever you want so that you know what it is. Next, inside uh, quotations, either single or double, we are going to load that image. So where is that image? Well, it's in the same folder, so we're just gonna say in the subdirectory, so we're gonna say res, so the folder inside our folder, and the image was called tux.png. But of course, you would label it whatever your image is labeled. And um, possibly later on in the series, if you have lots of things you need to load, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple little loop that can uh, grab all that stuff. Of course, you might, you are gonna probably use server-side scripts. Might get a little out of the realm of these series, but I might show you that later on. So now what's happening is this game loads, so I can save this. I'll come over here to my game, and I'll hit F5. Doesn't look like anything happened, right? We still have our blank game. Because we loaded our image of Tux into RAM, it, we downloaded it and made sure it's RAM and ready to go, but we didn't actually put it into our game yet. Let me go ahead and hit F12 here. I'm in Chrome. F12 is a very common key, but open up your Developers tab, uh, whatever the key combination is for your web browser, F12 is fairly common. And if we go to Network here and I hit Refresh, you'll see it loads some things and you see that it did download the image of Tux. You can even look at the preview here and there he is. So we did download it. The computer, it's loaded on our computer now locally, but um, it hasn't been added. I'm very sorry that my phone rang. Um, the, uh, we haven't put it into our game yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've preloaded it, so it's ready to be used. There should be no delay in adding it to our game now. So I'm going to go into our create uh, option here, our create function. Now, there are different ways to load images, and I'm going to show you 
not necessarily the simplest way right now. Because what I want to do here is I want to actually uh, create a uh, group. So it's kind of like an array. So the reason I'm doing this, I could just add the image there. But since this is going to be our player character, and theoretically later on you might want to add more than one player. So you could have a static one image or animated sprite um, that is a player. But if you later on you think you might want to add multiple players, you're going to want to have it in a group. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to say players. I'm going to call this players. Uh, and it's going to be my group. We're going to say game. So again, let me make this full screen here. We have our game object that we created at the top. So we're going to say create group from that object and we're going to add the group. So this side saying we're creating a new group and what are we calling this group? We're calling it players. So this way we can now uh, start creating our player. Uh, but instead of creating our player in the create function itself, because if you create everything in there, um, like put all the code for the player and then all the code for everything else in the create, the create function gets kind of big. So I'm going to split it off into another function. And I'm going to call that create player. You can call it whatever you'd like, but I'm calling it create player. So now we're going to create that function. Function create player. So now we're going to put everything we need to create our player in here. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do is we're going to say var. So this is a local variable. So it's only going to work inside this function. We're going to call it player. Now note, we have players up here and player here. They're two different things. I call this one players because that's where all our players are going to go, each individual player. So we're going to say, we're going to create a, a new object in here. And then basically we're going to say players create and then give it some parameters here. So here we're saying, okay, we're creating a new object and we're going to put it, basically we're creating something inside our players group. And we need to give at least three things inside this create function. We need to give it X, Y coordinates. So where this image, where this image is going to be placed and then what image we want to load. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go, zero comma zero comma and then side parentheses I'm going to say tux and that tux is this tux here so this knows that we're, it's looking for an image so it's going to look through our list of images that we've preloaded and find the one that we labeled tux so this should be placed in the top left corner of our game so let's go ahead save that and go back to our game here and refresh and there is our tux. Now he's kind of hard to see because the background is black. So real quick, let's here let's add in a different background color cuz by default it's going to be black. So let's come up here to our create function and let's have the first thing we do. We're just going to say take our game, take this stage that we're in cuz again you can have different stages. I can say background and remember this is all case sensitive, so write it like I'm writing it only spell things properly. Background color with a capital C equals and I think we could probably just do something like blue and I think it will understand that. Let's see. Apparently not. So the way the proper way to do it is to give it some hex code and I already have a hex code down here written for a light blue. Now you can go into GIMP and get these values but I'm just going to do a light blue here. If I do that and I refresh, there we go. We have a light blue background. You can see our tux much better. Uh, now, we're almost done with this, this tutorial. One thing I'm gonna change in our create player function, okay? So, right here, we're creating a player, but anytime we create a player, it's always gonna place it in that top left corner this way. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want players always stopping in the top left corner, even if you you um, create more than one player. but Let's go ahead and pass it the variable each time that we want to load it. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say x comma y, and here I'm going to place the values of x comma y, and then up here when we create the player, I'm going to say 
uh, 0, comma, 0. So here, in the actual game, we're not going to notice any difference. You can see our player's still up there. But if I was to change the variable here, you'll see he'll move over a little bit, over and down. See? So now I can go, I can copy this line of create player, and let's go ahead and go 200, and we'll leave that at 10, so they'll both be at the same distance down. Oops, save that. And now if I refresh, we've created two separate players at two different locations. Now in reality, uh, we should put uh, options in here to check if those are undefined. If they're undefined, fine, give them default values. We're not gonna do that in this, in this video. In fact, we're done for this video. I'm gonna hit F11 here so you can quickly look at all the code. Not a whole lot. We're doing great. We're, we're creating our game here. We're preloading an image. We're changing the color of our background. And then here we're creating a group. And then we're using this function to create two different players. And, uh, and you might go, hey, why don't you just put this line there? Because we're going to be adding more because that player needs other values. You might want to issue the player, you know, how much life do they have? Um, you might want to issue different images for different players. Uh, you might, we're going to give them some physics. So you want to say, you know, how heavy they are, how fast they move, um, whether they bounce or not, how much they bounce. We're going to get all into that in coming videos. So I thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you continue watching this series. Someone's going to ask, where's the next video? Uh, there's going to be one out every week. So be sure to just subscribe so that you see next week's video, unless you're watching this at a later date, in which case there will be a playlist, hopefully in the description of this video, to where you can watch all the videos in this series. So I thank you for watching. If you like these, this series, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Now that we got a character loaded, we're going to start having some fun, adding some more things. And as always, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. There's also a link in the description to my Patreon account patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. If you'd like to come and financially support me there with as little as a dollar a month, I would appreciate it. If you can't do that, which I understand not everyone can, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. That really does help. It gets me more views, and uh, although I don't, I'm not a millionaire, I do make a little bit of money on ad revenue, uh, ad revenue. I thank you for watching, and thank you for sharing, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.